மறக்காம சர்பிரைஸ் பண்ணுங்க थैंक यू Hey guys and welcome back. So for this lesson we're going to see a really nice positional game. Uh the white player being Grandmaster Alexander Delchev. Uh black side was a lower, lower rated player uh rated just over 2100 and we're going to see the the tactical and uh and positional uh expertise that that Delchev demonstrates in in this game. Uh starting with the position we have currently after queen b3 a uh, very typical idea with the bishop on f5 attacking the b pawn uh the game continued here in uh in a structure that we've seen before where white has more space on the the queen side and um as we'll see Delchev made uh, made great use of this going forward in the middle game uh knight h5 was played now this is a slightly different position than we saw previously but same exact idea where white does not want to concede the bishop pair and uh rightfully preserves the bishop with bishop to c7 then after knight e7 this brings us to uh the tactical moment and now the the move that Delchev played here i would like to classify as a positional tactic uh the move does not win material but rather uh improves the position for white makes it uh a lot easier to to kind of carry through with potential plans in the middle game and as we'll see the move not only helped weaken black's position but also uh led to some favorable trade for white. So that move is pawn b5. And this is a type of move that white would usually like to play at some point. And I should note that timing is very important in this position because black has pawns on c6 and a6. Uh b5 appears to be restricted, but white is able to take advantage of this pin on the a file. So the a pawn is actually not controlling d5 for the time being if white were to uh perhaps slow down and um perhaps play a, a normal developing move like knight f3 this would not be as strong because after rook c8 it is now almost impossible for white to to play b5 effectively in the position so b5 uh comes with very important timing and this is a common idea uh taking advantage of the of the half open file going for uh the trade of pawns which will ultimately undouble white's uh white's b pawns and uh aim to weaken the back the black pawn structure so going forward here black took with the c pawn and then white recaptures with the knight very important to recapture with the knight because white wants to target a uh, really weak square in black's position the square on d6 is uh in full control of the white pieces attacked by the pawn the knight and the bishop and as we'll see white uses a square to uh to make a nice positional trade after rook to c8 white plays knight d6 check uh forking the king on the rook forcing bishop take d6 and after bishop take d6 not only is white's bishop beautifully, beautifully placed in the heart of black's position but also white has the bishop pair and this is a a really important advantage going forward in the game as the bishop pair uh is incredibly strong especially towards the later stages of the game and also to note that white is now the only player with the dark squared bishop so um white pretty much dominates all the dark squares and it's very hard for black to uh to fight for the dark squares and this bishop on d6 is not easily removed so after knight h f6 is played black clearly wants to try and remove the bishop with knight e4 uh so now white plays another really nice prophylactic move pawn to f3 uh restricting the knight This is very common. If there's a knight on f6, sometimes it makes sense to to move the f pawn. And because queens are traded, white is not concerned about weakening his king. He's more concerned about restricting the black pieces. So going forward here, knight b8 was played, attempting to perhaps maneuver the knight to uh, a better square, and now b4. And again, white uh white has ideas of perhaps playing b5 at some point with uh this additional uh breakthrough on the the queen side this is uh one of the benefits about having double pawns in that earlier position white can play b5 once and then play it twice uh perhaps later on in the game so here king d7 was played white improves with king d2 98 finally kicking the bishop the bishop drops back to g3 knight c7 uh white goes for development after knight e2 and now knight c6 uh white's pawn is attacked on b4 uh one of the only weaknesses white has in the position very easily defended with uh with rook a4 and then after knight b5 
white goes for knight c3. And the whole plan is to try and fight for this b5 square, as now the knight on b5 is attacked by both white's knight and the bishop. And uh, as we'll see, white, uh, white basically forced a trade after knight takes c3, king takes c3, and after f6, white does not waste any time here going for the second, uh, the second pawn b5 of the game. And this time, white uh, opens up even more lines, as black is pretty much forced to take the pawn. Uh, this is perhaps a, a mini fork, as, uh, as both the knight and the pawn are attacked. Black probably can't get away with a move like knight b8, as it walks into something like bishop take b8, and the, at the very least, white could win a pawn on a6. So going forward with, uh, with what happened in the game, black took on b5, and now white's second bishop comes into play. And if we see the harmony in this position, white's bishops work beautifully together. This is uh, an important factor about having the bishop pair, is the bishops don't overlap each other, and they complement each other so well, especially in a position like this, where white is just aiming to dominate all of the key squares in black's territory. So black unpins himself with king e7, then bishop d6, the bishop returns from where it was earlier, and now it's, uh, again, very difficult piece for a move, very annoying piece for black to deal with. After king f7, now it's up to white to figure out how to progress in this position. And white found a, a very simple and, uh, and straightforward idea, uh, looking to open up the position even further and gain more space. Played, uh, played the very nice rookie one, bringing the final piece into the game and planning the very, uh, very simple pawn e4, which really can't be stopped by black. Uh, black played rook hd8, and now after e4, the pressure is just increasing. White wants to uh, to perhaps open up more lines in the center. Again, we see kind of this mini fork. And uh, here, black doesn't have too many appealing choices. If the bishop were to drop back to g6, this would walk into e take d5, e take d5, and then white can actually concede the bishop pair to get a lot in return after bishop takes e6 b takes c6, the rooks can now invade on the 7th rank uh, with rook a7 check to start, and then if the king were to move, the other rook can come in. And this is actually a really uh, common strategy in the endgame. I like to call this 7 heaven, where you have both rooks dominating the opponent's 7th uh, rank, and uh, as we can see, there is no defense to this pawn on g7, and uh, white is just having all the fun in the position. So going back, black did not allow this line. Um, black played uh, perhaps a, a complicating move, which didn't quite work out. He played this move e5, attempting to create some uh, some chaos in this position. But unfortunately for black, it just uh, pretty much ended up losing material after e take e or e take f5, knight take d4, and uh, the idea for black was now that the um, the knight comes to d4, this bishop is attacked. Also, the bishop on d6 was attacked, so white has to be a bit careful here, as uh, as both of these bishops are hanging in the position. So white played a, a very simple move, and it's actually the only move to keep the advantage here, surprisingly enough. So if you don't see it, I would encourage you to pause the video and find uh, find the winning move for white in this position. So that move is simply to get rid of the knights, rook take d4, and after. Um, after pawn take d4, king take d4, it's just a winning position for white, having uh, having two bishops for the rook. But the bishops are just so, so dominant in a position like this. Um, in the game, after rook take d4, rook take d6 was played, but then white very simply plays king to d4. And uh, even though the rook is still hanging on d4, the, uh, the rook is hanging on d6. White's going to stay up a piece after rook d d8, rook d2. Black just resigned in this position. So I really enjoyed uh, seeing this game. It was a, a really nice positional grind down from the white side. And I usually like seeing these matchups where it's a strong grandmaster against an expert level player. You really see the class of the grandmaster in terms of understanding the early tactics in the position, building up some, some key positional advantages. In this case, we saw the use of the bishop pair. We also saw the use of, uh, of many different pawn breaks. We saw b5 being played twice in this game, as well as this e4 move to uh, to further open the position 
and give uh, just a huge advantage to light. So I hope you guys enjoyed that, and I will see you in the next lesson. Thank you.